Lionel Messi, who was the difference today? He was. In, in a game that up until that point, let me just tell you, had it not been a World Cup game, everybody in the studio and everybody watching at home would have turned the channel because he had been awful. The tension and the ambience in the stadium sort of brought the level up, if you will, or the level of interest. But the game itself, the quality simply was not there. And it wasn't there from Argentina. It wasn't there from Mexico, who simply were trying not to lose. As for Lionel Messi, up until that point, the rhetoric would have been he's walking around, he has been ineffective, he has been inefficient, he's not impacting the game. And then Mexico has a brilliant idea, and that is let's leave Lionel Messi wide open, top of the 18-yard box, and in a moment of high tension where Argentina needed it the most, Lionel Messi delivers. So whatever the conversation was up until that point, after that, Lionel Messi and Argentina became a different team. You can feel the release of that pressure, the release of that tension, what it meant to him, what it meant to Argentina, what it meant to the fans. Only one team was trying to win this game from, from there on out, and that was Argentina, Mexico, mami. And I mean, oh, mommy, <laughs> going back to Lionel Messi, what a moment for him and a moment that was needed. We, we talk about Lionel Messi and delivering big moments. This is delivering big moments. It, it really was. Let's not forget, if Argentina lost this game, they were out. They were going home, Frank. And you could feel that tension building throughout the first half. Terrible opening 45 minutes. And as Ali said, right up until that Messi goal, it was a tense, horrible, ugly affair. But then that goal just changed everything. It did, and first I want to congratulate the fans, you know, because they put the atmosphere. Yeah. They gave the, the best the, atmosphere we'd seen. Yeah, and the rest, the best energy that you can get out of uh, of the fans, and, uh, and and especially for a World Cup final. And the, but the problem, the, the the players, they got carried away the wrong way, so they were trying to give too much energy, maybe into it, making stupid fouls. On top of it, when it's all about, when I heard it's, it was an aggressive game, no, it was all about faking cheating, even lying to the ref. So on top of it, if you put an Italian ref, will every time somebody's on the floor and gives a free kick, you have the worst first half of the, of the maybe the entire World Cup history. I, I, as you said, I wanted to, 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 to switch off the TV because I say, that's not the kind of football I want to see. Yeah, you can be bad, but at least you try to play. Don't try to fool the, 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 the entire world with your, with your football and with your stupid pretending stuff when I remember the, the captain of Mexico Cuadrado you know pretending that Lotaro Martinez hit him where his foot was like two feet away from his face and I said come on you have to stop that then the ref gave a free kick say that's not the kind of football I like it's true exactly exactly that when Messi scored that was another game yeah. suddenly players start to think about playing football and uh, Argentina showed to the to the world that they were better than Mexico overall. You, as Ali said, you could almost see the scripts being written. Yeah. You know, lost against Saudi Arabia. He was anonymous in that game by the penalty. Did nothing until that strike. I, I mean, I know, and, and we'll get to Mexico in a minute, but it seems the only people who did not read that script were Tata Martino and the Mexico squad because their approach to the game was, was simply amazing to me in, in, all, in all the wrong ways. Um, but to your point... Lionel Messi picks the ball up in space, sitting in the, in the half spaces in, in, in between Mexican line of defense and, and their midfield. And even so, and as much as we'll criticize Mexico, he picks his ball up, somehow finds space, but is an awfully long way out and has to beat Ochoa with a strike that had to be exact. And it was. And, and in all honesty, I think the only player on the park who could have done that was, was Lionel Messi. And, and it... it speaks to his brilliance, that you afford him one opportunity and that's what he, that's what he produces and that's all it takes to change the game and, and, dare I say, change Argentina's own prospects around this World Cup. Well, while we sing Lionel Messi's praises, I think Mexico are due far more criticism. Uh, Nadam, what was uh, Seb's reaction as that Messi goal went in? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me, I was hoping you wouldn't ask that. I think where we're based here, there's a lot of like Mexico support, there's a lot of Argentinian support. I mean the ESPN extra, Argentina desk is right literally there. Literally yeah. right there and there was so much tension. I felt a bit awkward to be honest because it was just very, very silent. And then the, the TVs have got a bit of a delay on them. So all, so all of a sudden somebody up here basically cursed in Spanish and it's like, well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It turned out it was a goal for Argentina, and I think that sort of shows how, how stressful it was for them, because they didn't even really celebrate. 
It was like a release of tension. And what he said could have been said by Seb Salazar as well <laughs> in the same sort of way in terms of frustration. But <laughs> it was tough. It was tough watching him. He was, uh, was kind of hurt, but I think... He's probably the best person to explain you're, the emotions that he went through. You're such a nice guy. You kept doing the, like, are you okay bit? Are you okay bit? And I was having none of it, Dan. None of it. A real couple living together. Oh, nice. <laughs> As opposed to Burley, who would have gone... <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk us through it, Seb. Yeah, I mean, it's a hugely disappointing day for Mexican soccer. The, the history against Argentina is, is clear, right? Knock, knock Mexico out in 2006, 2010. I don't think very many Mexico fans came into this tournament thinking that they could beat Argentina. But after you see, you know, what Saudi Arabia did and you realize what's at stake, Mexico has a chance, a rare opportunity, a, a chance nobody saw coming to knock Argentina out. And this is Tata Martino's loss. I mean, Tata Martino was brought to Mexico. He's the highest paid coach in Mexican national team history. He's the sixth highest paid coach at this World Cup. He was brought for the big game. Not to get him qualified, not to get him through the group phase, to, as Mexican fans always say, trascender, to get us to that next level, to that fifth game. And this is the game that you have to kind of get something out of if that's going to be the case. On top of that, it's the perfect matchup for Tata Martino. There is not a national team that he knows better. There is not a superstar that he knows better than Lionel Messi. And the way he set this team up is incredibly conservative. And also, I think we have to point out something we have never really seen under Tata Martino. There's a few examples here and there of them playing with a line of five across the back. But they're in like friendly games, and when they did it, it looked horrible. So for him to do that in this game is shocking. And I think the particular decision that I will just never understand, and, and I know that, yeah, I'm the punter here, and I, I'll fully admit that. You got a guy like Edson Alvarez. Mexico does not have elite players. <laughs> Chucky Lozano is maybe the closest thing at Napoli, you know, to, to being an elite player. Edson Alvarez has been linked to Chelsea, to Manchester United. He's a day in, day out starter for Ajax. He is, I think it's not even really a question. He is the, the highest performing player in the Mexican pool. I don't care what tactics you do. How do you put out an 11 and not put in your best player at all in this game? I mean, it's, it's unforgivable for me in that. And even if you can find a tactical reason to not put Edson Alvarez in through the first 45 minutes, your plan, you could say, worked. As you guys said, it was a horrible first half. If that's what Tata Martino wanted to reduce Mexico to, that's his call. Mexican fans don't like it. They want to see Mexico. If you're going to lose, lose going head-to-head -head with Argentina and let the chips fall where they may. But if you're going to go for the 0-0, then it's 60 minutes. When it's 0-0 and you've held on, I don't know, why don't you bring in the one holding midfielder who's going to continue to break up plays and maybe keep you in a 0-0. You bring Edson on. What happens? No, Tata Martino doesn't go to his bench first. Scaloni does. He makes his two changes at 63. At 64, the goal falls. And where does it fall? Oh, that's right. It's a pass right across the back line of Mexico's, Mexico's four defenders. And who would be there? That's right, the defensive midfielder. Edson Alvarez would have been there. Instead, Achiach is 10 yards behind. Nobody's around Lionel Messi. You can't give any player at the World Cup that much time. You definitely can't give Lionel Messi that kind of time. So for me, it's a tactical failure, and it's just more frustration for Mexican fans under Tata Martino. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the end of Mexico's tournament, maybe, but not the show. Is it just, look, none of those Mexican players get in the Argentina squad, do they? So isn't that just, isn't it just life? You just don't have the good enough players? No, none of the Saudi Arabian players got into the Argentina squad either. Okay. So, I, I mean, I, um, I, I, understand, I understand Sebastian's frustrations, in, in, in all honesty. Especially second game of the tournament after you see what Saudi Arabia do to, do to Argentina. And, and to Seb's point, it seems as though Tata Martino said, uh, Renat, I appreciate what you did with Saudi Arabia. I appreciate that you pressed Argentina really high up, frustrated them and got your just rewards. But watch this. <laughs> I'm going to play five at the back and, and sit off. <laughs> this is where, this is how you beat Argentina. It, it was the most bemusing tactical decision mm. I'd seen at this level of, of, of the game in, in quite some time. You want to sum this game up, you need no more than 30 seconds, and I'm being generous. I think Seb maybe needs a bit more. <laughs> no, I, Mexico launched the ball down the right <laughs> channel to Lozano. There is no other green shoot within 30 yards of Lozano. 
All he can do is try to play for a corner. And he puts it out to play. It goes for a goal kick. Balls kick long. Um, Messi, the whole complaint is Messi just walks around when things aren't going his way, but he just picks up a little space in between that rather ridiculous back five and the midfield, and he's just walking. And, and Hector Herrera doesn't seem to mind that. He gets drawn to the ball, and Messi doing exactly as it says on the tin, as he's always done, just picks the ball up in acres of space. This should have come as a surprise to no one. And then you allow Messi that kind of space, and that's what you get. And that was that game summed up in 30 seconds. The, the, the biggest surprise for me, in the context of what Mexico was doing, you also had to add that the fact that Argentina were not playing well. Argentina were having difficulties themselves connecting passes. I didn't quite understand what the role of Guido Rodriguez was in the middle of midfield for Argentina. They have the outside backs pushed up. Then the center backs would split or would spread, and then Guido Rodriguez would drop in between the two center backs, leaving Rodrigo de Paul to be the only outlet to play into the midfield for him to find outlets somewhere else and transition the team forward. Well, that was playing into the hands of Mexico, who were now pressing the ball, who was having an awful time holding on to the ball. He loses the ball in bad areas. Now it's the time for Mexico to then go on the counter. No. Only two players. So you're not even taking advantage of some of the decision-making from Escaloni if you're Tata Martino because you're not willing to take the chance to get forward and naturally say to yourself, you know what? We have a chance here. This team is not playing well. This is the team under pressure. They are the ones having a difficult time. There's an opportunity for us to go win this game. Even worse, they go down one nothing. Because you've had that defensive posture, and that has been the mindset, you know how difficult it is to then turn around and say, hey, guys, now we got to go over there and attack. Right. Now we got to go find a goal. No, the whole time we've been here, this is what we, we've been working on. This is what is, is, is supposed to be the game plan. And now you're asking us, um, no, change your plans. We're going to go attack. It was never going to happen, and they just simply did not have the tools out on the field, nor the execution or whatever the game plan was to be able to beat a team like Argentina. We heard Argentina in the uh, dressing room celebrating way after the final whistle. After all the criticism they received after Saudi Arabia, this was just about getting the result, wasn't it? And it's a massive kind of sigh of relief for them. Is this now a catalyst for them to move forward? Did you see enough in that second half to think this team can go and compete properly? I still have to wait. I know uh, Lionel Messi said that after the, the game in the press conference, that um, the second half was the real... Uh, beginning for us in our World Cup. So hopefully it's, uh, uh, we say yes, hopefully it's, uh, it, they restarted and uh, they're going to show a different kind of football. But I still have doubts about that. When I saw the first half, what they had to offer, when I saw the game against Saudi Arabia, uh, it's to be confirmed, you know, not only 45 minutes would be enough, or 30 minutes even, uh, is enough for me to show that Argentina is back to its best. No, no especially against a Mexican team who showed nothing. So uh, I want to see... Not maybe the next game, but yeah. uh, I guess uh, in the last 16, how they can perform. And or if we back to the 2018 World Cup where they've been awful. Uh, I think most people, Nadim, had them making a run to the semi-finals where they'd lose against Brazil. Is this team capable of doing that or even indeed making it all the way? I think that, that is a good question. I, you know, I agree with Frank. They've not really shown an incredible amount to this point, but the fact is they're still in with a chance. I think they go into that last game and you do fancy them to be able to get a result. So ultimately, they'll be in the knockout rounds. And even though, you know, you're looking at them thinking they're not at their best, then it's just about matchups and just moments. And it always helps to have somebody like Lionel Messi in your side, because at the end of the day, you know, he's still one of the best players in the world at this moment in time. And the support staff are going to be there. As you can see from, you know, the noise in the stands, like that game is so significant. And if they can get into those knockout rounds and have that passion behind them, they'll be a very tough side for people to come up against. And they're not necessarily going to be the protagonist within this particular story, whoever they're playing against. But they'll also be a very, very dangerous side. It seems that if they are to win it, they're not going to blow teams away. But at times you look at them and think, well, maybe they do have enough to be able to just get across the line on a game-to-game -game basis. And, you know, that's ultimately all they need to be in with a chance. So... I see them still continuing to go quite far in this, but you know they do need to clean things up a little bit. But the fact is, this was a must-win game for them today, and they did that. So in theory, they can give themselves a pat on the back. Uh, famously, Shaq, you changed your picks straight after mm -hmm. the Saudi Arabia defeat. <laughs> yeah. uh, you you picked Argentina, Brazil. <laughs> Would you like to now go back to the original pick? No, I, I no, no, I don't. I, 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 again, I, it's 
as important a victory as it was for Argentina and as, as stress relieving as it, as it may have been, it came against, I think, the worst tactical decision, as, as I say, we've seen at this competition, against a team that offered absolutely nothing. My concern for Argentina after the Saudi Arabia game remains that when they're under pressure, when they're asked to adjust, I'm not sure that this Argentina team, and dare I say the Argentina coach, have what it needs. Uh, a quick word on Enzo Fernandez. Why is he not starting, Ali? What a, what a finish. Well, he's going to be starting now. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and part of the issues that they had against Saudi Arabia, they had again today against Mexico, is that they're not getting enough from players out of the midfield. They're not getting runs out of the midfield. Enzo Fernandez can give you that. And in a moment in which it seemed like Argentina was just trying to hang on to the one nothing, Lionel Messi lays the ball off to Enzo Fernandez, and Enzo Fernandez says, you know what? I'm going to do me here. You know uh, hey, dip of the shoulder, a little step over action. I'm going to take the shot and go. Nobody else seems to be willing to do this, so I'm going to do it. He took control of the situation. He took the responsibility on scores ago, and now it's a hero. He'll be on the starting line of next game. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.